Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and today on my channel I want to show you how easy it is to transform ugly items like these that you might have in your home, that you might pick up at a yard sale or a thrift store, and turn them into beautiful decor for your home. Today's video is based on IOD transfers, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make them for almost next to nothing. These are the two products that I'm going to be using most in this video today. The matte clear I'm going to be using for anything that's glass or ceramic to give it a nice dull coat so my chalk paint has a better opportunity to stick to it. And anything that I need to cover like wood or wicker or a basket, I'm going to use the flat white by Rust-Oleum. These are paint and primers in one. They're my favorite products to use. No, this video is not sponsored by Rust-Oleum but I do find that the cheapest price is at Walmart. This is a basket that I picked up at the thrift store for $2.99. It has really good bones, but I just don't like the apples in that blue. So I gave it three coats of the Rust-Oleum flat white paint. For all of my projects today, I'm going to be printing off on white tissue paper, and this tissue paper is just from the dollar stores. I'm using Mod Podge and applying a thin coat to the basket, and then I'm going to be adding a label that I printed off on the tissue paper. If you want to know how exactly I do this with the tissue paper, I do have a full tutorial just on that down in my description box. So go check that out because today I'm just going to basically be showing you how to get the IOD look for less. This graphic I got from the graphicsfairy.com. I'll have that website linked down in my description box. If you haven't heard of that, you've got to go check her out. She's got thousands of different graphics that are free to use. All she asks you to do is sign up to her website. As I've placed the tissue paper down, I'm making sure that the brush that I'm using to put Mod Podge on top is nice and moist. You don't want to have a dry brush at all because that will tear the tissue paper. Once it gets wet from the Mod Podge, it's very delicate. So what I'm doing here is just trying to kind of wedge that tissue paper in between all of the seams from the basket. Since this basket has little holes in it, I'm just using this little scoring tool from the Dollar Tree and very gently poking a hole in the tissue paper where all of the baskets are. Then I'm going to take my brush again with some Mod Podge and just kind of push it through the hole to make sure that all of those little bits and pieces are glued to the inside of the basket. You could also just take your brush to the inside of the basket and fold those over and make sure they're glued on. All of the floral images that I'm using today in this video came from pixabay.com. That's another free site that you hear me talk about all the time. So if you follow my channel, you already know about it. I'm not going to be including these on my website because Pixabay is a free site. All you need to do is either click on the CAPTCHA button when you want to download something or you can create a free account and then you can download whatever you want. Some of their images are also available as an SVG file which means that you can use them with your cutting machine. After I was done with the one side I added a couple more blossoms to the other side. When I'm done all of my projects like this, I always give them one or two coats of the matte clear spray by Rust-Oleum. And that just makes sure that the paint sticks and the image stays on there and nothing's going to peel off. I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. What do you think? If you are new to my channel, I love farmhouse decor and I especially love making things over, making something out of nothing and creating beautiful home decor on a really skimpy budget. If that interests you, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and stick around a while. 
this tray is ceramic and although it's kind of cute it's just really not my style and it's not even something that I would give away to somebody. So I gave it a couple of coats of the flat white Rust-Oleum paint and then went over it a couple of times with my chalk paint. Now I'm just adding another one of these Graphics Fairy transfers. Now you can get these transfers on the Graphics Fairy website backwards which means that then it is a little reverse Mod Podge kind of thing, which I will be showing you that shortly. But I decided to just use the tissue paper and Mod Podge method for this as well. I'm going to take three roses for each of the other sections and I'm going to have them kind of dropping in from the top portion. Again, just using Mod Podge and tissue paper and these roses came from Pixabay. Again, just be really careful, make sure your brush has quite a bit of Mod Podge on it. You don't want it fully loaded, but you don't want it dry either. Now, I know that this tray is not going to be food safe, even if I seal it with my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Sealer, but it can be used just as a beautiful decor piece. I could see this sitting on someone's dresser in their bedroom to hold some of their jewelry. It could be a little trinket dish or maybe even sitting at the front door for keys and whatnot. So lots of different ways that you could use a dish like this. I think this one turned out beautiful too. For this project, I'm going to be using a dollar store tag, but I'm also going to be using this graphic from the Graphics Fairy. If you take a look at the lettering down at the bottom, you can see that it's backwards. I printed this out on regular printer paper, and now I'm just using my brush to apply a generous coat of Mod Podge. Now you don't want to go too heavy with the Mod Podge, but you need to make sure that all of it is covered really well. This is a technique that I learned watching Deidre from Our Upcycled Life. So make sure you go check her out. She does a lot of this reverse graphic and she's got it down pat. What I'm going to be doing here now is just putting the Mod Podge side down onto my tag that I painted with a couple of coats of white chalk paint. You're going to make sure that all of the bubbles are out of there. You want to smooth it out as best you can, get any little extra edges of Mod Podge on there if you need it. Don't put it on the tag, make sure that you put it on the paper and then we're going to set this aside to dry for 24 hours. It's the next day and now I've just got some paper towel that's fairly wet and I'm going to be just rubbing it over the paper to make sure that it gets really good and damp. You don't want it soaking wet but you want it nicely damp and then what you do is you start peeling off the paper and you do that simply by rubbing your fingers on it and you can already see even just using the paper towel that the paper is starting to come off but I'm going to continue using my fingers and just start rubbing off the paper. Now this turned out pretty good. This was only my second attempt at trying to get this done. I'm going to have to practice because I did lose a little bit of the image, but because I'm okay with rustic decor, I didn't mind that it looked a little faded in some spots. It takes a little bit of elbow grease to do this. You want to be firm yet gentle because if you rub it too hard, you will take some of that image off of your item. But I love how this turned out and I think I'm going to be doing a lot more like this in the future. This teapot or coffee pot, whatever you want to call it, didn't need any paint prep, but I did give it a good cleaning. I'm going to take some Mod Podge again, and this time I'm going to be covering the whole side with the tissue paper transfer. I just thought that would look really pretty if it was covering the whole side. So I'm just going to be placing it on, and again, very gently with my brush and my fingers, just making sure that I get all of the tissue paper adhered. Yes, I'm going to get some wrinkles. Yes it's going to look 
a little homemade, but I'm okay with that. I think it still looks absolutely gorgeous when it was done. And the other thing that I would thought when I was editing this video is I always find pieces that are white that have some kind of design on them that I cover up. And now I found something white that was plain and I'm adding a design to it. So it's just funny how things kind of go around and around. Since the petals and some of the leaves were going over the edge, I decided to just go with it. And instead of cutting them off, I'm just going to fold them over with the Mod Podge and just make it look very natural. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I decided to grab that little leftover leaf and put him right on the lid. Now you could definitely still use this as a coffee pot or a teapot just for serving, but you'd have to be super careful on how you wash it. It would be just basically wipe it out on the inside and very gently wipe the outside of it. It will also get a coat of probably a couple coats of the matte clear finish. For this project, I'm using one of the houses that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I popped the back off and gave it a couple of coats of my DIY chalk paint. I'm going to now add this beautiful transfer to the top of it, and I have some different ideas for the bottom of it. The farm animal graphics that you see me working with now came from pixabay.com. All you've got to do is type in vintage pig, vintage cow, vintage rooster, and they will show up and you can go ahead and download them for absolutely free. These reminded me of the IOD stamps. I know they have some transfers like this too. I decided to use the little pig and I'm going to Mod Podge him to the bottom of the sign. I do have a couple of items from IOD. I did pick up their vintage market clay molds, which has the cow, the pig, and the sheep. And I also have these sprig stamps, but those are the only two products that I really, really wanted to have. So I did save up and I splurged and got them for myself, but I won't be getting anything else because look what you can do with just a little piece of tissue paper. Here's the exterior of the house. I did paint the top part of it white so it would blend in a little bit better with the background. And now I'm taking another one of these little tissue paper flowers. I'm cutting some strips because I thought it would be really fun to add a little bit of some color and greenery to that top edge of the house. I'm going to just go along the bottom portion up the side and then a little bit on the opposite corner and I think this turned out super cute. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. If you enjoyed this video and liked learning how to create your own IOD looks for less, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up. That lets me know you like this type of content. I'll create more and it also gets me noticed more on YouTube. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't, it's totally free. That black arrow will tell you exactly where to click. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.